Hello, I'm John Grom, and welcome to our 185th Right and Left Discussion Forum. <clears throat> we hold our televised discussions twice monthly to demonstrate the value of civil, productive, open-minded political dialogue. There is no specific topic for today. We're asking each one of the panelists to speak on whatever they choose. And we're hoping that uh, the rest of the panel will find a way to question or challenge or discuss uh, the, the topics of other panelists. Today's panel includes Brian Lawbaugh, president of r and Financial Services. Dr. Ronald Chamberlain, retired senior research chemist. Joe Gaines, former faculty member at the University of Akron and Wadsworth High School. Patty Haskins, member of the Wadsworth City Council. Brian, this has been a week rich in discussion material. What in particular has grabbed your attention this week or any other week for that matter? Well, a couple of things have grabbed my attention. The um, fiasco happening in Afghanistan that doesn't seem to be reported uh, that we're pretty much leaving Americans behind and how the press and the current administration is um, couching that in terms of if they want to leave. Um, and it's just amazing to me how quickly um, we see the press in the process of, I guess, going along with the narrative that somehow this exit in Afghanistan was all coordinated by Trump and that even though the current president has, has pretty much gutted everything that Trump has done, they had to leave that uh, exit uh, strategy in place from the Trump administration. Now, what really is troubling is we're dealing with a group of people, and I wasn't, uh, um, you know, I was just as opposed to dealing with the Taliban a year ago, and, and when the Trump administration announced that they had negotiated uh, sort of a peace settlement with the Taliban, um, that how quickly our military and our intelligence services have backed away from all the uh, all the briefings they did and all the information that that government that we had propped up for the last 20 years and pumped, um, I think the last count was $2 trillion. We got uh, $800 million into an embassy that we've now uh, turned over uh, to the uh, Taliban. And you know, how, how quickly that government folded and the 200 or 300,000 well-trained troops uh, basically left their post and have now gone AWOL. Uh, so that, that's one thing, that, that, that whole situation in Afghanistan, I think uh, from a bipartisan standpoint, we need to look at that and some people have to be held accountable for that. I, for one, don't understand that you withdraw your troops before you withdraw a civilian component. And I find it hard to believe that they didn't know with some, uh, with some accuracy as to how many Americans were in Afghanistan at that time. Now, these are contractors, uh, people that had contracts with the government. Some had their families there. You know, we had a very large air base that we walked away from. Uh, why couldn't that be used uh, Bagram Air Base as a point of um, uh, a, a point a point to uh, get these people out. What's that? Extraction. A point of extraction. I mean, it was a hardened facility. Uh, my nephew did two tours at that uh, uh, at that facility. He's in the Air Force. He's a support type of person uh, for an air wing uh, that that operated, um, and they they did two tours there. He had pretty good knowledge of that. He said there's no reason why that they had to just sort of walk away from that after spending hundreds of millions of dollars uh, fortifying it. And, you know, it's, it's the size of an international airport. It probably rivals Cleveland by three or four times. So that's one thing. The other thing that seems to really kind of, you know, this whole COVID thing and how we're turning people against each other really starting to bother me that somehow you know, we're letting the press and certain people uh, out there um, start to go after people that haven't, for whatever reason, gotten their vaccine. I mean, 
I, I personally have the, I got vaccinated, but I could care less if someone else decided that they didn't want to. And some of the things that are coming up on social media, I'm disturbed that Delta now is going to start charging their employees $200 a month if they don't get the vaccine. I think that's a, that's a case that's going to, their union will take that up and that'll end up in court somewhere. Um, and what's not being reported, and this is off of the CDC website, people of color, Hispanics and Blacks are very resistant to getting the vaccination. And we're glossing over that. And I'd like to know why, why would they be so you know, resistant and hesitant? Could it be that Kamala Harris came out and Maxine Waters came out and Joe Biden came out when warp speed was in process with the Trump administration and they sowed the seeds of doubt? You know, there's a, there's a real uh, conundrum here that, uh, you know, the people that are most affected by it are not getting the vaccine. And, and I'm, I'm troubled by that. And, you know, that needs to change. And I'm, I'm not for businesses or, you know, companies <laughs> mandating that. Uh, there's other ways to go about it. And I think that uh, we've, we've really gone a little too far in, in shaming these people and creating, you know, we have some governors that are, are saying that, you know, if you don't get the vaccine, you, you, will, you, you know, you won't hold a government job. And I think their unions are going to take that up uh, because I don't think we've ever had that before. So those are my, you know, two, two or three things that have really sort of piqued my interest that, uh, that we've gone so far down this rabbit hole with COVID that, uh, uh, you know, we're now starting to financially uh, punish people uh, that work for companies because they won't get the vaccine and, and for whatever reason, so. Okay, anybody? That's what? actually going to be my topic. Uh, I, I, I share many of your, your uh, things on that, uh, Brian, and I'll, I will touch on a couple of those too in my, in my talk. Not completely, but some. Sure. <laughs> in fact, I disagree, you, disagree with you on a couple of points, but uh, at any rate. I still like you. <laughs> and I like you. <laughs> but don't you think that in many cases, the reason that Blacks have problems with the vaccine is because of the way it's been used in the past towards their race? That, that, that's a good point. Yeah. That, 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 that is a very good point. And, Are you, you know, talking about the Tuskegee experiments? Yeah. Well, there's I, been others, too. I, so we can't, we can't just lump everything into the conspiracy you know, anytime someone says something, you know, it's like, oh, these conspirators, they're conspiracy theorists, and they're so wacky and crazy. I don't hear anybody calling uh, those people wacky and crazy because they experienced just that. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, when you mentioned the fact that the number of Blacks that have not received it, um, that was recently the talking point of the Lieutenant Governor of, of uh, Texas who blamed the, the uh, proliferation of, the, of COVID on that race um, when, and, and the reports that the numbers that I saw that it is a much smaller percentage of blacks that have not received the vaccine as opposed to whites. Um, in addition to that, what they found that it, it tends to be more a separation between Republicans and Democrats and Trump voters and Biden voters. In a recent ABC poll, 91% of the Biden voters are vaccinated, whereas when it comes to Trump voters, it's less than 50%. Um, that, you know, that is one of my topics. I am so very concerned about the advancement of COVID and especially the Delta uh, virus. And, you know, present time there's 334, excuse me, 434,000 over that people in this country that have died of COVID and it's not getting any less, it's accelerating. There are over 38 million people in this country that have been affected by COVID. Um, you know, you, you talk about mandates. 
I don't have a problem with the mandates. You know, my one of my grandsons, well, both my grandsons just went back to school this week. And where was my 11 year old grandson last week, the week before that, getting his required vaccinations and boosters, five of them, including tetanus, MMR, all of these to make sure that the children in our schools are safe. And that would be the purpose of, if nothing else, mandating that students in schools wear masks. You know, effectively, the, the Republican legislatures throughout the country are taking away the ability of governors, of health departments, and in the case of Ron DeSantis, or in the case of Abbott in Texas, taking away the ability of even local governments to make the decision to have a mandate. Now, you know, I, what I keep hearing is that, well, children are um, not so likely to become ill due to COVID. You know, the problem is they, you know, they won't die, but there are those that die. They are also transfers of this particular virus. And we're trying to keep them safe from sickness. Not everybody died of polio. Not everybody died of the measles. Not everybody died of the chicken pox. But the fact that students and kids can go to school and be healthy and not have to worry about contacting a disease that is keeping them out of it. You know, and the even bigger concern I have is the fact that people that are unwilling to take a vaccine or to wear a mask based upon the advice of the CDC, on the advice of experts such as Anthony Fauci, Fauci have discredited them and prefer instead to listen to the primetime lineup on Fox News of Tucker Carlson, Sean Hannity, and Laura Ingram, who have promoted the use of ivermectin. What's that? Ivermectin is a deworming drug, which is used in horses and cows. <laughs> they have stated, they, you know, people are taking this drug based upon the expansive medical knowledge of these talk show hosts, as opposed to listening to science, to the extent that in certain Southern states, feed stores, which is where this is purchased, are running out of this drug, to the extent that it prompted the FDA last week to put out a tweet saying, you are not a horse, you are not a cow, come on y'all, stop it. <laughs> when we have to go to that extreme mm. to get people to do the right thing medically, I think that we have a, you know, a huge problem. I bet we have a lot fewer people with worms. <laughs> yeah, you know, unfortunately, hey, very hey. dying from this. And, and I'm sorry, I just don't understand it. I just spoke to some parents last evening who have children in Wadsworth schools, and um, they are still, it is not mandatory that they wear a mask in the schools. And each day, the superintendent is posting the num new numbers of COVID cases in the elementary schools. I am just eternally grateful that my grandchildren attend an elementary school where masks are, are required. Mm. Don't have a problem with that. Mm. Ron, what was it that you were going to bring up a minute ago? Well, uh, thinking of all the things that are going on that, 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 that scald my tomato, <laughs> uh, I, did, I did choose COVID because uh, I think it has a strong personal uh, uh, effect on, on me. And, and with my age bracket and my particular underlying medical conditions, I'm one of the more vulnerable uh, members of the community. And, and uh, 
it makes me sad that people are avoiding vaccination and wearing masks because they can be effective. On the other hand, it makes me a bit angry that they're not protecting me very well. So what I did is I, I set up a, just a number of bullet points, really, that we, we here on the panel, I, I believe now, are, are pretty well convinced that vaccinations are necessary and they're highly effective and uh, it's proving to be robust against the Delta variant as well. And, and uh, the most recent number I saw was if you're not vaccinated, you're five times more likely to get infected and 25% more likely to be hospitalized. And currently, uh, the reports from all the medical uh, organizations that most of the people in now being treated for COVID are unvaccinated. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this is just doesn't make sense to me. Uh, <clears throat> you can be infected, uh, even though you're vaccinated, you may have few symptoms, but pass this along. Uh, the way respiratory viruses are, are transmitted, uh, it's very effective if you wear a mask, if you are, if you are infected, which means that you're less protected from someone else if you're wearing your mask. So this means to me that people should be wearing masks, particularly in, in indoor situations, and I am doing that. I'm, I'm very lonely at the grocery store, but I've got my mask on. <laughs> Not completely. There are, other, there are others. Um, Excuse me, Ron. Ron, why do you wear a mask? I wear a mask because if I'm, if I am, if I do have this and I could have it still, then I'm not, I'm not transmitting it to other people. But you've and been gives me a little bit of, of, uh, of protection. I do have a couple of N95 masks that I keep re-sterilizing. Those protect you going both ways. Yeah, but you're vaccinated, right? I am vaccinated. Which means you can't transmit it. You can't. Which means I can transmit. Oh, you I can. can. Trans I can get it again. I can get. Oh. I can be reinfected. Oh. This is this is occurring. A secondary infection can be can happen to vaccinated people, and uh, then then I may not feel it. I may have very few. Uh, I have generally respiratory allergies. I'm I'm coughing and sneezing. My nose is running from time to time during the day. Am I sick? I don't know. <laughs> I'll try to protect. I'll protect you, John, if I meet you and I'm wearing out in the store and I'd be wearing my mask. If I have an N95 mask, it'll protect me going both ways, and I wear that sometimes if I'm going to be a, if I know I'm going to be in a small space. Mm -hmm. So I'm really. I don't know why it's so politicized. I would think that particularly the the problems that we read about at least are, are in Republican-led states and. Uh, the Trump administration had great credit for, for doing for doing the setting up the distribution system. It was a, a, an, a, an excellent job, and, and you know why should we why should we try to dis, de, de, denigrate that? You know, it's been a, a, a very good effort. Uh, mandates. Well, I don't again like Patty. I don't particularly have a problem with them. Uh, is this a medical choice, as people say, to be vaccinated? Uh, does your personal choice uh, supersede your civic responsibilities here? Um, an example for this, I think, is uh, smoking bans. You know, we don't smoke now in in restaurants and so forth because it's really proved that secondhand smoke is is dangerous to other people. Uh, what's different here? I don't really know. Um, nursing homes, for example, P nursing homes are been reluctant. I have read the was like 53% in Ohio of nursing home personnel. And, and I have a, a personal knowledge of this. Somebody told me that uh, their daughter who, who uh, works in a nursing home, is, she's a registered nurse, she did not get vaccinated until very recently when her adult children kind of jumped on her and, and persuaded her that she should do that. So nursing homes say that they have staffing problems. They have perennial staffing problems. They figure if, uh, if they make this a mandate, uh, then people will walk and find another place. So uh, uh, there's a couple of ways to think about that. Uh, what's the difference in asking people in your, that you work for you to be vaccinated uh, or your public to be vaccinated or wear a mask? Uh, no shoes, no shirt, no mask, no vaccination. I don't see much difference in that, really, and, and philosophically. Why do we have these political tensions? What's what's different here? And this is a broader broader topic. And and I I, I heard some uh, somebody discussing this not too long ago, and 
the thing, same thing that happens when we have a deeply held belief and whatever it might be, and somebody questions that, we dig in our heels right away. And it turns out that the brain studies have shown that this is the same area of the brain that's activated with the fight or flight reflex. So we immediately feel threatened about that. And, it, and we immediately then react against it. And, and the term for that is the backfire effect, <laughs> where, where it, just, it just comes back and, and, and beats on us. And, and it's a, the logical and emotional response here is a, is a real thing. And we, if we're aware of it, then we can try to counteract it a bit. So what do we do about people who are, who are uh, defying these, these sensible measures? And, and you can, we can discuss a one too about you know, government interference and, and, uh, and that sort of thing. Uh, it, it's just odd to me that uh, in the Southern states where which Republican led uh, are suffering such a high rate of, of, COVID, uh, of COVID attacks uh, that uh, you know, these, they're looking to have uh, government influence, <laughs> government uh, mandating of uh, no vaccination, including Ohio. Ohio uh, uh, SB 22 prevents the government from issuing any mandates, and uh, House Bill 228, which is not yet, uh, which is not yet a law being discussed, would block schools from requiring masks. Uh, that's a great deal of controversy. A recent uh, uh, meeting in, in Columbus, where over 400 people uh, in favor of this bill, you know, came out to testify for it. So, but. Just to what, so how, how we should respond. Uh, our pastor's been giving a series of talks about uh, Paul's letter to the Philistines and, and uh, the Philistines, the Philippians, and uh, I'll just to leave out any theology out of it for the moment. Uh, Paul has been, been informed that there's a controversy in the church at Philippi, and, and it's not recorded whether he took any, any uh, action about that, but he, he did advise his followers. Uh, and the words of the translation being used, to be gentle with one another. The Dalai Lama speaks of being compassionate. Here at right and left, we talk about being civil. And I think it's a pretty much the same thing. So I think we personally have got to be, as Brian, I think, pointed out, we can't be upset with people who are making a different choice. We can't be immediately vituperative against them. We can't immediately attack them. We have to be a little more a little more gentle with people who are different from us. So. so, Joe, you mentioned to me on the phone that you had some thoughts. What are they? I always have thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyhow, I like this, what we're doing with this topic. I like doing it this way. It's kind of interesting. And, and I'm listening, and everything that's been said, I agree with in the sense that, yeah, I think they're important. But there's an issue out there that I felt was important to me because it affected me, and that's the Disability Act, okay? And here's what I mean by that. Uh, for years, I looked at people who had disabilities and I, I felt bad for them and, and whatever, but I knew that if they went to a restaurant that was taken care of, it was if they went to a hotel it was taken care of, the government would do something to help these people. Well, now I have a disability. I have Parkinson's. I can't walk and I can't stand for very long. And I, I got to tell you, it's made a big change in my life. I, when I go to a restaurant, I've got to know, can they, and will they serve me correctly? When I go to, to a, a hotel, is there room in the bathroom for me with my walker or my wheelchair? Um, so the issue here is, what do we do about that? Can we force the government to, to mandate more? Should we? Um, no matter how hard you try as an individual, you're going to find yourself with your back up against the wall and trying to get some things done. Um, does that make sense to you? Is it... It, does, it does. I had an experience. Uh, I was on the <laughs> board of directors of a house we were building in, this in Danbury, Connecticut, to uh, to be a program house for, for uh, uh, homeless folks. And there was a, a, an entrance ramp and initially this was put in and it was the wrong slope, yeah. too steep. We had to tear it out and put it in again. And I think that was good. Well, you know, 1990 President <clears throat> W. Bush 
uh, passed the uh, Disabilities Act in 1990. And uh, it hasn't changed. I mean, it hasn't really made any big impact on anything. We still have our major problems with it uh, over 30 years ago. Um, you know, I, I, I can't travel like I like to. If I go to a hotel, I just don't walk into the hotel. I've got to call them up first to make sure that they have the facilities that I could use, that I need. Uh, if I go to a restaurant even, I've got to make sure that that restaurant is made for the handicap to serve the handicap. It's different. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, but you know, I don't. I don't suppose that there will ever be enough uh, in the way no. of accommodating uh, handicapped people, because I, I think that uh, the population is getting older, and there are going to be more of us that are handicapped than ever before. Well, I agree. And, I think it's a good point too. Uh, I know that uh, I, I go into uh, a, a lot of restrooms that are. Um, that have facilities to accommodate people that are handicapped. But if you go into one that's not, that, that's pretty important to you. Uh, so I, I can I can see the, the difficulties, Joe. Um, uh, John, I, I wanted to go back to a topic that Brian brought up and that was uh, the Afghan situation. Um, I agree with Brian and that I think this was started and done horribly. Um, the administration claims that they do not or did not, it depends on what day I guess you listen to, that they didn't know how bad it was going to be when they pulled out. And then the next day you hear, well, yeah, we expected it to be this bad. I mean, clearly there was no thought out plan in this. Now, I, I realize that something like over 70% of this country wanted us to get out of Af Afghanistan. And I, you know, I appreciate that. But um, I mean, I remember when we pulled out of uh, Syria and left the Kurds uh, to their own resources. And it seemed like we were doing the same thing here. I, I guess you have to weigh whether we, I mean, I, I think I'm, I actually think I'm agreeing with Brian that Zoom I'm is going to, Patty, Zoom is going to cut us off any Oh, minute. I'm sorry. We got four minutes. We got four minutes. Really? <laughs> the counter says four minutes. No, yeah, no. Brian's uh, excited. You, you are out of time, panelists. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, you were so excited. I was agreeing with you. I was so <laughs> close to getting. watching WCTV, Wadsworth Community Television.